everyone and welcome back. If this is your first time, I hope you'll stay. Espero que te quedes. Today, I want to bring you from here to here in terms of vocabulary. Especially if you're lower school and you're doing Spanish but you think that perhaps it's not your thing because you don't have that range of vocabulary that you'd like to have. This lesson is going to be perfect for you because what's going, what it's going to do is take those 10 words that I am absolutely positive you already know and make you sound a little bit more native-like. Are you ready? Okay, let's begin. Okay, so um, the first one I have for you is leche and I know you've seen leche because that's in the first um, the first parts of your book when you start to do food um, food, family, friends and all of that stuff most of these you would have seen in the first few topics so let's check, you would have learned it as milk me encanta beber leche I love to drink milk or por las mañanas tomo un vaso de leche in the mornings I have a glass of milk but did you know that you can say, you can use leche to describe something? So, all you're doing here is putting la on it. And it's, it comes from the expression ser la leche, to be the milk. So, if I was to say to you, la peli es la leche, the, the film is the milk. What I'm saying is that the film was is absolutely amazing. Eres la leche. You're amazing. You're incredible. Ser la leche. Okay? So just put in ser and la in front of leche just tells you that something is absolutely brilliant. Amazing. I love this for you guys. The next one I have is perro. Again, when you're looking at animals, farm animals, um, pets, you would have seen perro for dog. But if I was to say tu perro, tu amigo es muy perro. If you're explaining that someone is perro, okay, es muy perro, it, it just means that they're a bit of a sponge. Okay, they're a bit lazy. Your brother is really lazy. He does nothing, he just sits around all day. Es muy perro. Okay? <laughs> Write that down. Someone who is lazy and just lays around doing nothing. Okay? A muy perro. Okay? No hace nada. He does nothing. <laughs> so I like that for you also. Okay? Leche y perro. Another one that I'm absolutely positive you know is madre. What's the first thing we teach you in the family? Padre, madre, hermano, hermana, and all of these. So you would have seen madre for mother. Okay, you would have seen mother. We all know mother. There are lots of expressions uh, with mother, but the one I've chosen today is madre mia. Madre mia. It's like, oh my. Okay, or it could be, oh no, something a little bit naughtier. Um, at home, we would say, be hell. Mm, hell, okay. One is the, turn your ear, turn the volume down, ear sevens. Okay, I don't like that, but they do use that to translate this depending on the context, okay? It's a very used expression or oh, goodness gracious, madre mia! It means lots of things, many things. So this is a good one to know also, okay? <laughs> right, vivo. This is perhaps one of the first sentences you would have seen. Vivo in Trowbridge. Vivo en Bristol. Vivo en Londres. Okay? I live in and your town. I live. Vivo. You would have seen vivo in I live. Okay? But vivo also means live in vivo. You put E N on the end and you would get live. I'm watching the show live. Estoy viviendo, estoy viviendo el show en vivo. I'm watching it live right now. En vivo. An expression that I love with 
vi, vi, vivir, the verb vivir, vivir y dejar vivir. Okay? Live and let live. Live and let live. Love that expression. And it just means that you have to respect the, the, the way other people might live their lives or behave just the way you would do the same for them. Okay? Right. Next one. Grande. Big. You've seen this. Tengo una casa grande. Okay, I have a big house. Big. But perhaps you wouldn't have seen or you wouldn't have heard this. A lo grande. A lo grande means on a massive scale. On a massive scale. Or um, if I was to say to you, um, vamos a hacer una fiesta a lo grande. So a lo grande would mean look in a luxurious manner. No expense spared. It's just everything, limitless. A massive scale. It's going to be large. Okay, it's going to be large. It's going to be just absolutely brilliant. No expense. Anything you want, we're going to have it. Okay? A lo grande. I'm going to go out on this one. Large. It's going to be just full of everything that you want because money is no obstacle at all for us. <laughs> okay? Right. Let us move on to... Okay. Um, cara, which is this. Your face. La cara. Tengo la cara. Muy sonriente, a smiley face, <laughs> cara. But I bet you did not know this one, and if you did, share down below. There are lots of children outside, so I'm sorry for the noise. Okay, cara o cruz. Cara o cruz will translate to face or cross, but it's actually heads or tails. You know when you get a coin and you say, okay, I'm going to decide who starts first. Um, first. Heads or, or tails? And you say, oh, tails. If it heads on tails, that's cruz. If it, he if it, heads, if it lands on heads, that's cara. Cara o cruz. To do with the coin. Cara o cruz. Let me know, did you know that one? Because this is just nothing to do with the translation in English at all. Cara o cruz. Okay? Use that one. That would impress you. That will impress your teacher. It definitely will. Okay. Um, Donde is a word that you would have seen because this is one of your um, question words. Remember you have que, meaning what, um, quien, which is who, and so on. Que, quien, cuando, como, and so on. And donde is obviously where. Can you guess why I stuck this one on? Read. Vaya a donde vaya. Okay. Can you guess? Right, I'm sure some of you would have guessed that it is a subjunctive sentence. It's a subjunctive sentence and you have to get those in wherever you can because we just struggle as English speakers with a subjunctive tense. Okay, so, vaya donde vaya, it just means no matter where you go. Okay, so no matter where you go or wherever you go. So wherever you go, you're going to find people who are impatient, okay? Wherever you go, wherever you go, or it doesn't matter where you go, wherever you go, or no matter where you go. I am sorry, there are lots of children outside. I think they started trick-or-treating already. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, right, okay, let's move on. The next one is the word C. Even if you don't know any Spanish, si is the word you know, which means yes. This sentence, this is a question, a que si? It means, isn't that right? Isn't that true? It's like you're looking for corroboration with the other person. Um, so imagine we're talking and um, I say to you, um, this always happens here, a que si? I'm, I'm expecting for you to say, yes, actually, I agree with you. It happens here all the time. A que si. Very, very common. A que si. Get that down and when you're talking to someone and you want them to corroborate, co corroborate what you're saying, you can say to them, a que si. Eh, el chocolate, eh, el helado de chocolate es el mejor sabor. A que si. Chocolate ice cream is the best flavor. Right? Right? Do you agree? Love it. This one you would have seen, number nine in your book, a lot, bien, which just means good, 
okay? That means it's well, it's okay, it's fine. Probably just a tick your teacher will put and say, bien, it's good, it's okay, it's okay, it's fine. But if you put this preposition in front of it, de bien, it talks about your character. If I was to say, mi, hombre, mi, mi, mi padre es un hombre de bien, it means my father is an upright person. So de bien means, um, yeah, you're honorable, you're respectable, you're, you're um, upright, okay? So your character cannot be questioned because you're an upright person. De bien, un hombre de bien, una mujer de bien, una persona de bien, okay? And the last one for you, uh, we all know our numbers from one to 10. Uno, dos, tres. I'm sure you know these, and so because of that, I'll put this expression in with two and three. Cada dos por tres. Every three, do two by three. And it just means every five minutes. So continually. Cada dos por tres. Me estás tocando las cosas. Déjalas en paz. Okay? Por favor, Sebastián. Estoy hablando contigo. Cada dos por tres. Ven aquí. Si estás oyendo algo, es este bicho. Ok, cada dos por tres. Ya, yeah, ese es el momento que dices, perdón, mamá. ¿Ves? Imposible. Saluda, Sebastián. Hola. Ok. Hola, <laughs> Hola Lili. Cada dos por tres es um, every five minutes. Que dice, cada dos por tres estás hablando. Every five minutes, um, you're talking. Every five minutes. Um, you're continually talking, stop. Cada dos por tres. I do love this expression and it will impress your teachers. They'll be thinking, oh, you've been stuck here. Cada dos por tres, estudio. If your um, expressions in Spanish. There you go. Anyways, that is it uh, on simple words that you already know that you can use in a different manner to make your Spanish sound even better, of a higher level. I hope you found that helpful and until the next time. Take care, take care guys. Adios.